The owners of this country know the truth. It's called the American dream, because you have to be asleep to believe it. Before I begin my video, I just want to remind you my dating site, clownworlddating.com, is up and running. Sign up is free. If you'd like a premium account, it's $10 a month. You could also donate or share a link if you don't want to sign up. I'm trying to get the idea off the ground. If you want to meet someone who's not an NPC, give Clown World Dating a try. All right, everybody, I am here today with New Zealand author Vince McLeod. We will be discussing his book, Clown World Chronicles. Now, Clown World Chronicles documents and explains the collapse of the Western world as it happens. Inspired by the works of ethologist Desmond Morris and by Plato's Republic, Clown World Chronicles explains why and how society today has deteriorated into the twisted circus it is. Um, and I will be putting links in the description of this video, so if you want to visit his website, if you'd like to check out one of his books or buy them, I'll also put the link in the description so you can go to Amazon and check that out. Uh, but how are you doing today, Vince? Hi there, Jed. I'm doing great. Today is actually my 40th birthday, and it's uh, sunny here in Nelson, New Zealand, so I'm feeling really good. Oh, happy birthday, man. I didn't know that. Oh, cheers. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, going to be turning 31 soon myself, so that big 4 is creeping up faster than I'd like, but hey, at least I still got all my hair. That's about all I can uh, <laughs> hope for at this point. Well, it's <laughs> a great age. It's a great age because people start taking you more seriously. When yeah. you're 30s, people don't listen to you as much. They think, well, you can't really know what you're talking about because you haven't lived long enough. But now that you're 40, you've kind of survived enough things that people think, okay, this guy's got something worth saying. Yeah, very true. It's, uh, you know, people nowadays, it's if you don't have the accomplishments under your belt or you don't have the experience, people just tend to write you off, even if you do have some good ideas. Um, but yeah, I, I read part of your book. Specifically, I focused on three sections. Gender Relations in Clown World, Education in Clown World, and Science in Clown World. It's a lengthy book, and there are a lot more than that. Um, but I found what you had to say about gender relations in Clown World to be very insightful. So you go into the incel thing a lot, too, which I find really uh, interesting, because that's sort of a newer topic, which uh, the word incel has been brought into our lexicon, what would you say, in the last maybe 10 years or so? I haven't really heard it before that. Um, yeah, and for all the last... For the last five years, it's it's a very recent thing, and I think uh, it's it's really become more common thanks to the phenomenon of hypergamy becoming more common, which we'll have oh, to talk yeah. about. Yeah, the proliferation of dating apps is uh, definitely yeah. adding to it as well, and the division between men and women is just becoming more and more obvious as you know, society tells us men and women are exactly the same. There are no deviations. The gender, I mean, I mean, they don't even want you to believe in gender, but men and women are exactly the same. You know, men have vaginas too. Women have penises, all that jazz. And uh, to even notice the differences makes you a pariah sometimes. Like people can say, well, women tend to be more emotional in their reasoning. Men tend to be more logical. Just simply saying things like that even can cause you to be ousted from the community, so to speak. And um, we see the rise in... If my users aren't or users, if my um, listeners aren't familiar with the term incel, it's short for in, involuntarily celibate, meaning that they're essentially removed from the dating pool. Um, now that's not by choice. They choose to uh, stay alone rather than even participate because things have gotten so bad that I think it's better for most men to just ride it out. Uh, why waste your money? Why waste your time with someone who you can't actually form a meaningful relationship with? which I think is a large part of the problem. Yeah, it's a huge part of the problem. I mean, the problem really has has multiple levels, but I think if we're going to explain it, the place to begin is looking at the biological past of the human species, in particular, going back to the primate times, because men and women, their selective and mating strategies, they're not unique to human beings. They're actually much, much older. In fact, the strategies that both men and women use in dating and reproduction, they are hundreds of millions of years old and go back to the earliest mammals. So uh, and if you want to understand why, why women in particular make the decisions they do, you have to start by looking at the actions of the female primate in a state of nature. And in a state of nature, the primate, uh, primates will fight over resources and the main one of those resources is women because that affords reproductive opportunities. And every sexually reproducing creature has evolved to maximize those reproductive opportunities. 
Well, that's so as you said water, in your book, you said women are the gatekeepers of sex, which is very true. You know, and men yeah, have, to right, distinct, because, they have to distinguish themselves in order to, to gain that woman's attention and for her to deem you a worthy mate, you know, um, which I think that's a lot of it's lost on people now is they think, you know, men and women are equal, they're the same, and women are in the workforce just as much as men. And what we're seeing is uh, women are actually completely independent now. They don't need a man. And a lot of men are finding themselves without any purpose, which it's by design, obviously. Um, and it's just very sad because it, it goes directly against nature. Yeah, it does. Because if you look at how humans behaved in a state of nature, you had the males would mostly go out and hunt and the females would mostly stay close to the camp and gather. So that meant that the female, the female could always gather nutrition, but she was dependent on the male for meat and dependent on the male for, for really quality food. And in this, in a state of nature, female primates, when they exchange with males who hunt for meat, they exchange sex primarily. I mean, they also, they also exchange social bonds and so on, but sex is the main, the main thing that's, that it's about. So if you look at the nature of intersexual relations in a primate species, it's mostly about the male acquiring resources and the female who's not so capable of acquiring those resources in a state of nature, taking those resources off the male and exchanging them for sex. Now, the problem you have, I mean, that works out actually really good in a state of nature. But of course, the problem you have in modern society is that gathering resources is no longer a matter of hunting ability. It's mostly a matter of agreeableness and obedience. So that means females can go into the workforce and in many cases actually be prized more highly by their employers than what a male worker would be because the female's more obedient, less likely to have problems with violence or drugs or whatever. So she can turn up and get the job done. So that's led to an extremely unnatural situation where the females are, are now holding, in many cases, more resources than the males. Now, um, the female is not inclined to trade resources for sex because she already has the sex. So if she has the resources and the sex, there's not a whole lot of use for a man. And that is the, the real cornerstone of our, of our gender relations difficulties in the clown world today. Yeah, absolutely. I 100% agree with that. Um, I think, isn't it now that women are outpacing men and achieving, earning a college degree as well? Yeah, that's actually been true for quite a while because uh, that was true back when I completed my master's degree, and that was 15 years ago. So I, 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 as, far, as far as I'm aware, the situation is now so bad that it's something like 60% women to 40% men in university settings, yeah, which and- is... Well, that can tie into something else with the education and clown world, but we'll get into that after about the, uh, you know, the leftist indoctrination and uh, women tending to be more, uh, what's the word, more vulnerable to that type of thinking and indoctrination, uh, which is kind of leading us to where we are. But yeah, it's uh, it's insane. Men find themselves without purpose. And I want to quote you one one part of your book. You said, gender relations have now become so bad that it's possible to speak of an incel epidemic, the proportion of American adults that don't have sex at all has doubled since 2008, which is alarming, um, and has tripled for men under 30. This means that there are a lot more lonely people out there who have never experienced affection from the opposite gender, which do you believe that that's possibly, you know, whether you believe these mass shootings are organic or real events, um, that aside, do you think that if they are, for the sake of argument, real events, that it's respond that the incel thing could possibly be responsible since a lot of these people who go on these shootings tend to be younger men in their twenties. Yeah, I absolutely think it's possible. I don't, I don't believe that uh, most of the mass shootings in public are, are um, arranged by the CIA or so on. I think that the vast majority of them are genuine events. The genuine, a person has genuinely lost them, their mental health and, and cracked and um, taken down on other people. And when it comes to mass shootings and incels, there's two points in particular that have to be made. The first is that uh, uh, incel, a person who becomes an incel, they don't have the... It's usually a female that keeps men in line because the, the promise of getting laid in exchange for behaving correctly is the number one thing that keeps men in line in a state of civilization. And that's why it used to be so important that everybody agreed that we have one man and one woman together in a marriage, because alternatives to that can be quite chaotic. So yeah. um, I think it, yeah, 
Yes. Yeah. No, it's um, it's just crazy to me because it's uh, I don't know if it's because of technology. Do you think that technology plays a key part in this? I, I think it does because um, when you have things like dating apps specifically, you have, I believe it's the eighty percent of women go for the top twenty percent of men. Um, so when you say you're just a regular guy, you're not the best looking dude in the world, maybe you're not that tall, whatever, um, you sign onto a dating app and you quickly realize that it's not all it's made out to be what you were promised it could be. You know, people telling you, oh man, you'll get laid, you'll get matches, this and that. But if you're not in that top yeah. 20% of men, women, they have so much choice. Now the ball's completely in their court and it, it ostracizes a lot of guys who, otherwise would have had a chance had that technology and things not been foisted upon the society. Yeah, well, that's, that I think is, is one of the most difficult things is that uh, when women have the choice, the, the greater the choice that a woman has, the more likely she is to just go for the, the chad, right, at the very top of the, the hierarchy. And that, that just follows naturally from how women evolved, right? Because if you're a woman, the thing is, the, the difference with a man is that if you – can get impregnated, there's a risk that you will get impregnated by some guy who's who's just going to take off and leave you with a baby in nine months of having to raise this baby and then raising it all by yourself. So women have actually got a much greater risk when it comes to having sex than what men do. And that is the primary reason why their behavior is different. Essentially, they, they know that uh, they've got a lot more at stake because they can get pregnant and then abandoned. Whereas the worst that can happen to a man is, well, he can he can sort of waste time with a woman and then go somewhere else, you know. But yeah. he can't get left with a baby like a woman can. So women women are much, much more picky when it comes to choosing their sexual partners than what men are. Yeah, it's um it's funny because most men now, it seems like they're just looking for a woman who has traditional values, a woman who loves them for who they are, or just really just being loyal. Um, and it's really not like they're looking to find a model. They're not looking to find the best of the best physically. They're just trying to find someone who they can relate to, will love them for them, you know, fulfill the rest of uh, the obligations in the relationship that a woman is supposed to perform. And while they perform theirs, that's how it's supposed to be, a symbiotic relationship. But what we have now yeah. is we just have we, – we have complete imbalance. It, it, and imbalance is putting it – you know, generously, it's it's completely out of whack. It's uh, gender relations now are just. I think they're probably the worst they've ever been in human history. If I had to take a guess, yeah, no, I'd agree. And it's it is a number of factors. I think the other factor, not only just technology, that we need to mention is urbanization, because like I mentioned before, a woman's selection mostly comes down to the number of men that she can choose from. And if she moves to a big city where there's a it's thousands of dudes, you know, you guys moving in and out all the time. She will, she will uh, be a lot more picky in that situation. But if oh, a woman, absolutely. say, in a village, yeah. But if, if you contrast that, for example, with if you go back 200 years where a woman lives in a village and she's probably not going to travel more than 20 kilometres or 20 miles outside of that village in her entire life, uh, then she's never going to see in her entire life more than perhaps 100 other dudes, then, yeah, she's going to be a lot more... Uh, uh, willing to come to the negotiating table. So uh, I think uh, a lot of it comes down to the way that the modern world just transports people around so quickly that there's there's just so much more choice out there for women that they think, well, I, I don't have to settle for a dude who's only 8 out of 10 because, you know, there'll be a 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 just around the next corner. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. It's, um, and it's, uh, it's just unfortunate because it, it seems to me like that it, there's more than one dynamic to that, the urbanization. So it's not just gender relations. It's, you know, the, they can get people out of the suburbs and it, it removes tradition. It removes any type of self-reliance. And the more you put people into, you know, closed quarters, urban environments, you increase the dependence on the state because obviously if you have to have all those people there, someone's got to feed them, someone's got to provide jobs, you know. And it's just multifaceted. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not even just gender relations, but... You know, they're doing that right now. Biden is basically in the U.S. trying to, uh, with the new infrastructure bill, get rid of basically suburbs. Um, and it's just, yeah, 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 it's just crazy, man. <laughs> we are in total clown world. Yeah, total clown world. And that's, well, the, another point that's worth making here is that it's not just the technology that, um, it's not just the technology and the choice that tips the balance in favor of women. It's also the fact that 
as you mentioned, as as you as you all shift into the cities and the government has to bring in more and more rules to to organise people's behaviour, that suits women a lot better than it suits men because women are a lot more agreeable. Women are generally much happier to just go along with uh, rules being pushed down on them from above. And yeah, men are absolutely. not. Like if you look throughout history, all the revolutionaries are men basically. Well, not all of them, but the vast majority of them are men because women always know that they just have to go along and then eventually the the guy in power will choose them because they're fertile. Yeah, and that's another thing that you see is with how you said women are generally more agreeable um, and men will tend to fight for their best interest and the interest of their families. That's an opinion that I do have, which, you know, people might say it's controversial and it's just my opinion. But I do believe that women being allowed to vote was probably one of the worst things to ever happen to society. And the reason I say that is women tend to be, like you said, more agreeable, but also they tend to reason more with their emotion, not so logically. And um, whatever makes them feel better or whatever smooths things out to where there's, you know, the least amount of fighting and everyone's just getting along, that's what they'll tend to vote for. But men would, yeah. would, on average, vote for the best interest of their families. How will this affect my family? Will this affect my ability to provide for them? Will this affect my ability to keep them safe? And when you remove that from a society and you have these parasitic controllers in charge who all they want is bodies in the workforce, it doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman, they want both. Hell, they want children. You know, we had to pass laws to make it so that wasn't the case and we don't have six-year-olds working in salt mines. But you have men and women now, they're just working alongside each other as if they were completely equal. You know, they're voting not based necessarily off their best interests, but what might be, you know, what might be more pleasant to deal with? What might just be more agreeable? All right, they say do this. There won't be as much trouble if I just vote this way. I'm just going to vote this way. And I think that's a huge problem, yeah. especially in in countries where you see the le leadership is mostly women. You you tend to see it go topsy-turvy pretty quickly. Yeah, well, it is. it can be an extremely big problem. If you read the book Propaganda by Edward Bernays, written in 1928 so it's 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 very old it's pretty much the foundation of the modern propaganda and public relations industry and he wrote already back then in 1928 that propaganda ought to target women in particular because they are more agreeable and more amenable to propaganda they're more likely to believe that if the people around them believe something then they ought to believe that too whereas exactly. men are much more disagreeable in that sense and so he knew yeah he knew that um the propaganda ought to target women, and therefore, it also means that the controllers of the propaganda have more power if women have the right to vote. Because if women have the right to vote, they can they can put what they like on the television, and they know that women aren't really going to stand up to it or oppose it. They're just going to go along. Yeah, very so true. Having a, system, having a system where women vote makes the entire population a lot more pliable to the will of the ruling classes. And I know that because New Zealand, we gave the woman the right to vote in 1893. So that was a long time ago, right? Yeah. And uh, basically the first thing they tried to do was ban alcohol. <laughs> well, hey, it was, uh, when, I think work. it was the 1920s here, they got the right to vote. And then the 1930s, we had prohibition. So pretty similar. Yeah, right. It's, it's the same everywhere, right? The first thing they tried to do was ban alcohol because they don't understand freedom like a man does. Because for them, freedom is... Freedom is not necessarily uh, a net good, whereas for men it almost always is. And when they, you, you see, also when they failed to ban alcohol, the next thing they did was ban cannabis. Yeah, because basically you got to ban something. Like like the for, for for the woman, the whole point of having voting power was to restrict the behaviour of men. So yeah, I mean that's why we got stuff banned, and we're just not as free as we are nowadays. Yeah, we are uh, probably the least free we've ever been in human human history, and it's about to get a lot worse. I think, um, you yeah, know, this this whole yeah, great reset is uh, <laughs> it's creeping up on us real quick, especially where you are. Uh, New Zealand is pretty bad right now. I think New Zealand and Australia and the UK, probably well, aside from Canada as well, are probably the worst locations right now as far as you know ty tyrannical restrictions and things like that. And just yeah, well, the oh, funny I can't even look bit. at that woman. I just want to punch her right in the face. <laughs> so, uh, Dan, yeah, well, it's it's no coincidence that we happen to have a woman of breeding age and power at oh, the same absolutely. time as we're having all these all these restrictions brought in. Because if you're if you're a woman, full stop, 
you're thinking you've got to think more about safety because you've got to think about your infants and children. Man doesn't have to worry about safety as much because he's big and he's got muscles, right? He can defend himself. But woman's got to think about other things. And it means that Jacinda Ardern, when she's in power now, all she's thinking is about safety. But she's not thinking freedom just doesn't come into it. Like freedom's just a, it's somebody else's moral values, right? Yeah, it's just a word she's heard once. Yeah, some dude might have said something about it in the cabinet once and she just ignored it. You know, it's not, it's not really a priority for her. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you've got, when you have a society where women have that much influence, you're going to have a, you're going to inevitably have a society where the needs of men are forgotten. And that, when it comes to gender relations and incels, that's part of the problem. Because if you look at what actually happened when civilization was put into place, basically the first thing what you do is that you have an arrangement where you have one man and one woman, as opposed to the alpha male having four women, like you have in a state of nature, and then the beta males maybe having one woman each, and then the lower males getting nothing, which is which is what you have in a primate troop. Instead of that, the alpha male gets one woman, beta male gets one woman, and all the guys down at the bottom of the hierarchy, they also get one woman. Now, that might mean that certain women become unhappy, and that uh, that is why you have certain uh, feminist movements today because they're rebelling against the idea of being forced to marry substandard men. That's their psychology, right? But um, it does solve the problem of having men who have got nothing to contribute to society, that, I mean, that, I mean, that don't have a society to contribute towards. Because if society says to a man, you're not ever going to breed, you're not ever going to have kids, then the man doesn't really have an incentive to contribute to that society anymore. And that's the real danger of the the incel epidemic it's not so much that there's going to be mass shootings i mean that that is definitely a bad thing but the real danger is that a large number of men just drop out of society completely oh absolutely they'd rather sit around like i said it's why bother going out on a date wasting all that money to possibly maybe have sex to you know then probably get ghosted either the next day or whatever why go through all that effort when you can just stay at home watch tv smoke a joint drink a beer throw a pizza in the oven play some video games do whatever anything but be a productive active member in society which overall will benefit humanity you know and it, it's it's destroying our our species really um because it, is. it, it it's it's what is it? Uh, male fertility rates are at one of the lowest they've ever been. I think I can't remember the exact number off the top of my head, but I wonder how much that has to do with technology and and all of this put together. Where you know, obviously, we have the medicine system which is poisoning us. We have our water is poisoned, our air is poisoned, our food is poisoned. You have estrogen mimicking hormones and endocrine disruptors. Soy, which I read that part of your book actually. Um, you have all that stuff put into the population that they're. They're creating more homosexuals through chemicals, trans, transsexuals. They're creating all these problems, um, which only goes to push men and women further away as they divide, divide, divide. You know, oh, you don't like gay guys? Well, I can't be, I can't be with a guy who can't hang around a gay guy. My best friend's gay. And oh, it, it's all these things which cause all these problems which never existed before. Um, it just seems to be proliferating and running amok right now. It's just crazy. It's... Um, <laughs> it's it's completely inverted from the natural order. Yeah, it's completely inverted. But that word that you said just then, order, that's ultimately what it comes down to. Because if you're if you're a female and you're looking for a male, what you're ultimately looking for is a male who has the ability and the will to impose order upon chaos. That's what it, that's what it comes down to. Because if you're a man in a state of nature, you've got to go out there into the chaos of the of the world and you've got to impose enough order of it that you can bring back meat. And it's the same deal with a man in the modern world. You've got to, he's got to impose enough order upon his own behavior and his own emotions and his own actions that he can go out and work a job. But so that, that, that's the most important thing that it comes down to. That's the one thing that attracts a woman more than anything else, because that is the essence of masculinity. And you see that, uh, for example, a short man who's imposed order upon himself if he's fit, if he's if he's well dressed, he can still get laid, right? Whereas a tall man who's disorderly because he's a slob, uh, he's he's still going to have difficulty getting laid. So it doesn't just simply quite come down to to genes or looks or anything like that. It's mostly about your ability and will to oppose order upon chaos. That's what it means to be a man. Well, and also you like you were saying too, hypergamy. Yep, yep. I was just letting you speak. Sorry. 
um, where it's also looking for a higher socioeconomic status than maybe what you are. Um, which the thing is, if women are outpacing men as far as earning money, degrees, and careers, then what is there to look for? You, they, like you said, and you know, they hold all the cards. So it's like, ah, it's 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 just insane. <laughs> Well, it's, it's not just difficult for men. See, this is the thing. It's also very difficult for women. Because if you're a woman, you are, hypergamy means, yeah, you look for a man who's, who's above you in some way. Now, when it comes to height, it's easy because men are naturally taller than women. And that's still true, even today. But when it comes to income, yeah, it's different. I mean, if you're a woman making $90,000 a year, your dating pool is actually pretty small. Like if you, if, you are, if, you are, if you are thinking in terms of a man has to be able to provide for my family, and I can already provide $90,000 a year, then, well, I mean, a woman in that situation has limited herself to 5% of dudes, and that's before she's even talking about height or looks or intelligence or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you, you've got, you've got a, you've basically got a, a, the world's arranged in a way that's made things extremely difficult for both men and women. And well, I think ultimately like, um, what you end up like, with is you'll end up with women alone in their 30s and 40s with multiple cats eating a pint of haagen every night, watching TV and drinking red wine to fall asleep. And then you have men keeping to themselves, doing basically their version of the same thing. But ultimately what you're having is you're having a lack of reproduction. You're having a lack of social bonds and uh, normal gender relations taking place. And all it does is further their goals of depopulation and taking over society and subverting it from within. Because of course, what you do is you attack the family um, and you attack gender relations. Those are the two primary ways to achieve their goals. Yeah, the communists have already done that. And one point that um, I make in Clown World quite often is that it's not just about the communists, it's also the corporatists and the capitalists on the right. They would also very much like to see all women just work themselves to death and just import cheap labour from overseas instead of having your own kids. Oh, so yeah, fascism uh, is just as bad as communism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that's a point I made often in Clown World Chronicles because I'm an alternative centrist, which means that I oppose the establishment but I believe that the alternative left and the alternative right are both mostly dangerous extremists. And yeah. so like I like to take the take what I see as the good things from 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 all the different positions. And I think the alternative right, they definitely are correct when they say that the balance of society is favoring the female too much. Because it has to be at least even enough that the female looks up to the average man. Because if she doesn't do that, she doesn't have she doesn't have a biological motivation to stay faithful to him if she can't look up to him. If she can't look up to him and at least see a superior in terms of either physical strength or social status or intelligence or wisdom, if she can't see a superior, she won't stay attracted to him. Absolutely. And the dynamic is completely gone and there's no reason. And it uh it's really as simple as that, you know, and it's yeah. people wonder how do these people control things? Be, and also to bring up uh, propaganda by Edward Bernays again, the first chapter he's, you know, talks about how most things you see and your beliefs are crafted by men you've never met, you know, invisible forces yeah. which control things. And it's really yeah, as simple yeah. as that. They, they control us mentally. They put us in a prison. And feminism was one of the worst things to ever happen to women. Um, things like that, you know, and also the men go their own way movement, which is just as damaging, um, which you've probably heard of that, the uh, alternative. Yeah, sure. And it's like things like that, all well, it's is doing, they're, they're, they're results of the situation we're in, but also all it's doing is further to divide and exacerbate the problem. Yeah, and it's really, when you think about it, it's really just a massive tragedy. Because as I said before, no one, no, none of us actually win from it. I mean, women, women don't actually win from becoming 40-year-old cat ladies. No, it's, absolutely uh, it's, not. Uh, it's, uh, it's really just a, a tragedy. And the, the major cause of the tragedy, in my opinion, is people are just uh, impossible to satisfy nowadays. But one aspect of life in clown world is that you've got advertising all the time. And that advertising is always making us want things. It's always saying, you know, we don't have enough. Our stuff's not good enough. My girlfriend's not hot enough. You know, you're watching TV all the time. You see Scarlett Johansson every day. You think, I should have a girlfriend that good looking. Otherwise, it's just not enough, you know. And so people, people are just not satisfied with what they have. If you go and see a village somewhere in Europe, I've, I've, visit, I've traveled and I've visited some of these places. The villages 
they don't watch if they don't watch television they they don't have these desires they don't have these desires that make them unhappy because they just naturally desire what they're naturally going to get which is you know perhaps a girl from the next village and and that's enough for them but in our world you've got uh yeah you just you, you're not allowed to be happy because happiness is bad for profits Oh, absolutely. Just like with the modern medicine system that we we're dealing with right now, it's like, well, there's no profit in treating sick people and curing them. What we've got to do is we've got to create yeah. the problem initially and then make lifelong customers. Um, which I mean, we could transition if you'd like, we could talk about the science and clown world as well. Um, which I found that really interesting. Yeah, sure. Um, because one part of your of your chapter in there, I'm gonna quote you, you said Clown world science is everything science shouldn't be, which is coming up with a desired conclusion first and then finding evidence that fits it. Um, because that's exactly what we're seeing right now. You have scientists, doctors, so-called experts saying things like masks work and prevent transmission of viruses, or that social distancing likewise can mitigate the spread of viruses, when in fact, all science and evidence directly contradicts that. So what do they do? Yeah. They, they limit your access to information using the platforms yeah. upon which you've been made dependent on. And then any information yeah. you get, which isn't from their clown world sources, is disinformation or misinformation. It doesn't reflect reality. It's, it's the world in their image. Yeah, that's right. I mean, they present an image of the world as they want the world to be seen. And then your behaviors, they'll naturally follow after this image because... I mean, well, that's just how it is. The difficulty comes when they've got total control of the entire apparatus of propaganda. Like, the globalists control not only the internet that you mentioned with all the information, they control the television, they control the radio, they control the newspapers. They they decide what people think. And uh, when it comes to science, the difficulty is you've got a lot of politically motivated people who have infiltrated the sciences, especially people on the left. And I'm talking here in particular, Marxists and communists. Yes, and absolutely. They, they are especially guilty of what you mentioned just before of putting the cart before the horse and coming up with the conclusion first. Well, their conclusion is their politics, their science says that everybody should be precisely equal in all measures. And so their science follows after that. Their science says, well, because politics, because my politics says that people should be precisely equal on all measures, therefore there are no behavioural differences between men and women based oh, on yeah. biology. Yeah, you have the and, differences um, in. That. Well, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I, no, no, it's the differences in, in races. For example, is the same thing. They'll say because my politics says that everybody should be equal, then therefore there are no natural biological differences between race and IQ. Oh, exactly. And so they say that. Um, same thing with men but, and women. Uh, men, means... men tend to have a larger brain on average than women and tend to have a higher IQ than women. It doesn't mean women are dumb, obviously, and it doesn't mean that black people are dumb or anything like that um, because IQ, as we know, is you know not a perfect science. But there are differences, and there, there is studies, or there are studies, and there is science which can back that up. But the moment you bring anything up like that, it's it's they cut your mic, you're done, you have no say now. And you know, it's yeah. you should be able to have a discussion, even if you don't necessarily agree with the views being put forth or whatever. But that's the thing. And, and in your book, you say, in theory, the beauty of science is that it's apolitical. The archetypal scientific mind is one that has no fear for the truth, nor any fear of worldly terrors. As such, the true scientist is not influenced by political concerns. They have no desire for the world to be a particular way. They only wish to discover the world as it is in all its florid, multivariate glory. So, you know, when yeah, you put I mean, politics science... into it, it's all it's going to do is defeat the purpose of what the the field of study was meant for in the first place, which is to find the objective truth in things, not to put your own spin on it to benefit yeah. you in that moment. Yeah, 100%. I mean, science and politics, they should be as separate as what science and religion are. Because politics, much like religion, the whole point of it is to introduce lies for the sake of manipulation and power. So yeah, politics should be it should it should have absolutely nothing to do with science. I mean, if you're a scientist, oh, if you're in a scientific faculty and someone starts going on about how Jesus is God, you normally just exclude that person, right? You just kick them out because you you know that if they're going to put their religion first, then they're going to cause the science to become corrupted. But if someone comes along with their politics, and says that our oh, men and women are exactly the same, all races are exactly the same, anyone who says different sexist and racist, they don't kick people like that out. 
And that's what really needs to happen. If you're gonna if you're gonna have a non clown world science, you have to make it so that okay, we are apolitical people. We put the truth above the science in all cases. So if someone comes in here with their politics, just fuck off, right? That's how it has to be. But um, because the faculties are so full of leftists nowadays, they're kind of just taken over. Oh yeah, yeah. And like you so, said with the Marxist, it's um, and you mentioned that in another part of your book on the education section. Um, it's given yeah. a Marxist strategy, reshaping society by infiltrating institutions. So not even just um, ec- educational institutions, but scientific institutions, medical institutions, really anything they can get their hands in, that's what they're going to do. And basically yeah. universities at this point are just, you know, Marxist training camps spouting nonsense, you know, and yeah, they you, you have professors are. quitting left and right because they're like, I can't even reach these kids. What am I even doing here? You know? Yeah, well, you notice if you go back to the communist revolution of 1917 in in Russia, uh, that was one phenomenon that was especially pronounced in the universities. You had basically the students take over and they started they started teaching or lecturing everybody else based on their political inclinations. And they just kicked all the scientists out. You know, all the old people who who were interested in science above politics, they just come in and said, well, you people are bigots. You know, you, you're counter revolutionaries. So you've got to make way just the same way they do now. Oh, yeah, the so, same yeah, thing with I mean, the unvaccinated, just because you choose, and, and you don't even have to be anti-vaccine. Uh, me, personally, I don't think vaccines are necessary. I, I, if you read books like Murder by Injection by Eustace Mullins, he gets into that, and you can get into the whole Rockefeller medicine system, the Abraham Flexner report, and how they homogenized it, and it's everything gosh. but, you know, it's 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 an allopathic medicine system, which doesn't actually help anything at the end of the day, or usually with the exception of surgeries that you might need. Um, yeah. But generally, like pharmacies yeah. and things like that, it's all unnecessary. Um, that used to be a really common word, the word allopathic. When someone would say allopathic medicine has killed blah, 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 number of people this year, that used to be a quite a common concept. But now it's dropped out of the consciousness. Like oh, people yeah, seem there's to a, just there's a few words I've noticed that they've done. Uh, if you know the word alloidal, like alloidal title ship, meaning you own it, that's I'll- it. You don't pay taxes on it. Uh, I, I noticed that I brought it up to someone before. I, I went to type in alloidal title ship on Google and you know how it gives you the little red squiggly line, like, oh, you've typed it incorrectly. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I haven't yeah, typed yeah. it incorrectly. <laughs> you're you're trying yeah. to mentally yeah. subvert me into n- taking that word out of the lexicon because you're you're making me think, oh, I spelled it wrong. Well, I'll just choose a different word instead. That's easier. I'll choose something yeah. that's less letters. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just um, – yeah. If they if they don't want to hear it, they'll remove it basically, or they'll invent these new terms and have you focus on those, and then we just get these sound bites like "oh, fake news, fake news, fake news," and you know people are just repeating yeah. these you know deep state all these words, and they don't actually look into anything or what any of it means. They just regurgitate these useless terms. Yeah, it's the power of the mainstream media. Like it, that's just so powerful that it can make things seem normal when they're in fact not normal at all. Like um, yeah, I still, I still can remember the war on Iraq and how the mainstream media was basically doing the cheerleading for George W. Bush, and was like, "Yeah, we got to go smash this dirty Arab." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, they, and, and the they funny make- thing too is the left, for what it is, they, you know, back in the day, they they used to actually protest righteous causes, like you know, like, "Hey, we shouldn't be bombing the shit out of these brown people. Let's let's get out of there." You know, and then people would be like, oh, you're a bunch of communist nonsense. But it's like those same people who would have tried to assassinate Bush when he was still in office are now praising the guy because he compared the January 6th protesters to the 9-11 alleged terrorists. You know, it's like, how far have we gone that that's the case? Yeah, that's mad. And I think um, it reflects what has been one of the biggest political changes of the last probably 40 years, which not many people have noticed, which is that the left switched from being the libertarian side to the authoritarian side. And, and if, like, if you go back to the 1990s, the, it was always the right who wanted to bring in the authoritarianism. It was the right who wanted to put homosexuals in prison. It was the right who wanted to put drug users in prison. It was the right who wanted to, to crack down harder on inner city black crime and so on. And it was the left who was the libertarians that opposed all this sort of thing. But then somewhere it switched, and you've got now a situation where it's the left who wants to impose all the all the order on people against their will by imposing all the vaccine lockdowns and the and the coronavirus restrictions. It wants to force them to behave the way they want to behave. They want to force them to not say bad words. 
they want to force them to think in a certain way and the right is is sort of becoming more of its old school revolutionary libertarian like the american revolution was mostly carried out by right-wing libertarians not left-wing libertarians oh and absolutely the right seems to be going back to its roots my uh, my girlfriend brought up that same point actually probably like two weeks ago. She told me because she used to be a left leaning person and now she's I, I wouldn't say she's right leaning, but she's she's generally more objective in how she sees things and she just you know tries to find the truth no matter what side it falls on. And um, she told me she's like, yeah, I used to be left and we used to, and she's like, it completely switched. Now the right wing is left wing and no one seems to notice. And it's so true. You know, it is it is weird because when I was a teenager. People would people would say right wing and authoritarian as if they were synonyms. They'd say someone would talk about something authoritarian, and someone would say, "Well, that sounds pretty right wing," as if it was just the same thing. But that just totally switched, and um, I'm not sure exactly why. But um, I think part of it has to do with the inherent female nature, because most women naturally vote for left wing parties because the left wing parties want to redistribute wealth, and if you're a woman, you're trading sex for wealth you naturally want to be on the side of the maximum redistribution. And so men tend to naturally vote for conservative parties. But when that changes, you've got a society in, in flux and chaos. Yeah, I mean, yeah. our society really is in a state of chaos, and it's going to change rapidly over the next 10 years, and then we are going to have a very new order that's going to be based on uh, ameliorating the excesses of the last 40 years. Yeah, it's the uh, the Great Reset, Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, uh, United Nations, One yeah. World Government. And that's that's the thing is like with this whole COVID pandemic, it's I mean, people can believe what they want. I don't believe there's a virus. I believe that the vaccines are, aren't vaccines, obviously, but they're a Trojan horse, which is going to cause illness, which will then be called a variant. And then they'll blame the unvaccinated. And oh, the unvaccinated, you keep hearing that it's a it's the division and polarization of the population. It's a pandemic of the unvaccinated, right? You know, I got a vaccine, but you didn't get yours. So now mine doesn't work. It's like, well, how did you arrive at that conclusion? But it's like, you can't reason with these people. These are the same people who, when offered a free Krispy Kreme donut, injected a mysterious substance into their veins without asking any questions. Like, you can't really reason with these people. Um, it's just utter insanity. Yeah, no, it is insanity. They're the same sort of people who believe that Saddam Hussein did 9-11 because all they have to do, all the all the mainstream media has to do is make that association. They just had to keep saying Saddam Hussein 9-11 and they didn't have to say anything else and people just naturally made the conclusion. And they do exactly the same with the vaccine thing. They just have to say unvaccinated and that's connected with the vaccine epidemic. And that's all they have to say. They just have to keep labouring those two points and people will put them together in their own minds even though they're wrong. And they'll say, okay, the unvaccinated people are, are the cause of the coronavirus epidemic. Yeah, and that's, and and that's yeah, a, the sad part is it's like even if they were to listen to these same sources which are telling them that, they would get the contradictory information or they would at least pick up on it. You know, like the CDC saying, oh, if you get the vaccine, you don't spread it. And then a week later saying, oh, if you get it, you can still spread it. Um, so even the people that they're getting their information from constantly contradict themselves. But they're in such a state of cognitive yeah. dissonance that – for the listeners, if you know what the, the term cognitive dissonance means, it's when you hold two conflicting beliefs simultaneously, which obviously is illogical and you can't do that. But that's what most people are doing. It's like, well, vaccines don't work. Well, vaccines work. It's like, well, which is it? You know, like you're, is it an epidemic of the unvaccinated or are the vaccines actually causing the virus to spread more because they're telling you those two different things and expecting you to just blindly follow them and I think people don't want to think for themselves. They'd much rather abdicate that role to these quote unquote experts or whoever, people like Fauci, who, God, I, uh, I can't stand that guy, man. They're coming out with a new movie, by the way. If you, <laughs> I, I hope you got your tickets ready because I have a feeling it's going to get sold out. But, um, you know, they listen to these people as if they're gods. And it's because they would rather do that than, than do the thinking themselves because that's too hard, you know? Yeah. Well, that's partly biological as well. I mean, if you look at the human primate in the state of nature, most people aren't actually intelligent enough to understand what's going on. And so they naturally just look up the authority chain to find somebody who does. And usually that's the alpha male, the big chief in some way. And that's been replaced by the television in our modern society. So the, instead of having an alpha male who calls the tribe around and lays things out, you have the television that just says, this is how it is. Yeah. And when the television contradicts itself, 
like it, like as you mentioned with the vaccines, whether they're safe or not, then well, people don't know what to do. They go into a state of, I suppose it's a it's a kind of uh, resignation through excess. Well, it's actually learned helplessness, and there's a chapter about this in my book, and in Clown World Chronicles, they go into a state of learned helplessness because they realise that they just they just can't figure out what's true. They just give up. They just say, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, they've been demoralised. It's, it's, yeah, utterly demoralised to the point where they don't have any confidence in their own ability to make sense of the world. And that is horrifying if you think about it. I mean, that's really what it means to lose a psychological war, is to be reduced to that state. But that is the state that many people have been reduced to. It really does feel like we've lost the psychological war, and that's why things are the way they are. Well, that's the thing is most people don't realize like people are waiting for World War Three as if it's going to come when Israel attacks itself and then blames whoever Iran or whatever. No, that that might happen physically, but we're already in World War Three people. I mean, it's a psychological warfare. It's asymmetric warfare. This isn't going to be bullets flying left and right people next to you dying you know, due to violent yeah. trauma, it's going to be psychological trauma to where it renders people ineffective and incapable of even fighting or knowing they're even in a fight. Yeah, that's right. But that comes back to the point I made before about the essence of masculinity being the ability to impose order upon chaos. Because a man, a real man, should be able to look at this informational nightmare that's flying around and despite all the chaos in it, still make sense of the world. And if you were able to do that, if a man can do that and stand up and say, I can make sense of the world and this is what it is, he will still massively attract the feminine element because the, the feminine element can't help but to become devoted to a man who has the rectitude to understand how things work. Oh, so absolutely. I think what, 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 um, what the point that needs to be made, I think, is that although things are extremely difficult right now for the average man in comparison to any other point in history, there is still an enormous amount of opportunity for you to impose order upon yourself and become such a high quality man that you could attract any woman. Whereas that wasn't possible in the past. Like in the past, okay, you couldn't sink below a certain level, but on the same token, you couldn't also rise above your station of birth. If you were born a peasant, you're going to marry a peasant. And that's the end of the story. But now if you really want to do the Arnold Schwarzenegger thing and, and make yourself into a, a king among men, you can do that. You have the power to do that. So Clown World, it's not all bad. It is kind of 75% bad and 25% good. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it, It's got its perks. It's got its you know drawbacks. But me personally, I, I feel like I was born in the wrong generation. I, I really wish I would have been born maybe even, you know, 100 years ago and just had a chance at a real life with, you know, traditional values and just people made sense. And it's like, you know, that's why I fight so hard, rage against the machine, so to speak. And it's like... I wonder if it's all in vain. I wonder if it's just an exercise in futility because it seems like we we need to have the awareness of the problem first and foremost in order to even solve the problem. But if we're in such a state where people, like I said, they're under such mind control and they're psychologically damaged to the point where they're, they don't even know there is a problem, you know, let alone going about solving it, you know, like, what do you do in that situation? What, what, what do you think are the solutions? I mean, do you have any solutions that you propose or do you have any ideas that you think might work to get us out of this mess? Yeah, I've, I've got some ideas, but I think the most important thing that has to be kept in mind is that society has a momentum of its own. And the momentum of our society is really crashing into the ground. Like it's, it's, it's things are, things are going downhill at a great speed. So what I'd recommend to be the solution is if you're a man, the most important thing is to impose order upon yourself and always first and allow yourself, after having done so, to become kind of like a totem pole around which the rest of your community can organize itself. So I mean, what I mean is impose order upon your emotions so that you understand all your emotions and you can control your emotions and you express the emotions when necessary and you don't express them when they're not necessary and you control order upon your thoughts. So you think the right things and you don't think the wrong things. And you also control, you also impose order upon your spirit. And I think this is the most important thing so that your will is an order and is, 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 is an order with the will of the divine. So that what you want is the same thing as essentially the will of the Tao. If you've got all of those things in line, then you will have rectitude and the feminine element of society, if that's women or young people or beta males, it doesn't matter, 
they will look at you and they will see that you have successfully imposed order upon yourself and that you are uh, uh, a point at which the rest of society can be organized around. And I think that's the main thing. Don't worry about so much the Western world and where it's going. I think the time is coming where people ought to think more about their own local communities and try and get to know all their neighbors by name. Oh, yeah. And that's why yeah. you see masculinity is, is attacked so much. You hear terms like toxic masculinity, as if that even means anything, which it doesn't. Um, but like you said, the moment the man takes control and creates order out of that chaos, then he starts fighting for what he believes in and what's right, and then can gather an army yeah. even to do the same thing. And that's going to put those people out of power, and they can't have that. So yeah, they have really. to invent terms like toxic masculinity. Um, and I, I think, too, to like, well. I'm sorry? But that's all that George Washington did. He just had an enormous amount of rectitude and that allowed other men to organize themselves around him and eventually he had an army and it was enough to throw off the tyrannical oppressors in the form of the British. It'll be the same when clown world ends. It'll be the same phenomenon. A man has to ignore things like toxic masculinity because like you say, that really is an attack. I mean, that's an assault on, on natural masculinity to have a propaganda system that talks about stuff like toxic masculinity. And you can see that especially when you compare how children grow up without fathers. You compare their behavioural outcomes to children who grow up with fathers, and you see that children who grow up without masculinity in the home do much, much worse than yeah. children who grow up with masculinity. They basically maintain the emotional maturity of a teenager. They don't really fully develop and become their own man or woman. Um, and likewise, you need both parents. It's not just the man, you know, that basically makes the person who they are it's it's the woman too but it, it goes back to the gender relations you have to have them both fulfilling their roles you have to have that balance right. and we yeah, don't yeah. have that balance it's it's we're, we're a society of broken people making broken people and it's just a cycle that isn't being broken um and it just right. seems to be like you said crashing down and the solution is to is, is decentralization it's being being conducting mo or sorry is conducting most of your business on like a local level like you said so get to know your neighbors you know try to form a tight circle you know maybe even go to the farmers market start doing things like that um we could even start creating local currencies if we wanted to and just exchanging them between each other i mean it's it's really as simple as things like that but um i just don't know where we begin how we reach people and i think the way you do that i guess is to educate people to let them know about these problems and if they have the ears to listen you know hopefully they do and then they spread that among other people who can listen and i think your book is yeah. is i i do plan on reading the full thing and i think it's a really really good book i think your insights on a lot of these topics are are outstanding i think you are on the money as far as i'm concerned yeah, well, cheers, Chad. I mean, this book is it's really the result of uh, 20 years of learning. I have It was 20 years ago that I first went to university to study psychology. And I got out in 2006 after I finished my master's degree because I saw that uh, the university system had become compromised by communists and feminazis and other crazies. But this book is really uh, the culmination of 20 years of observing the world and the things that were wrong with the world and trying to come up with a solution for what we could do about it. Yeah, a lot, a lot of thoughts got into it, man. This is, yeah, this is definitely my life's work so far. It's, it's my big achievement. Oh yeah, and I, and you've been a prolific author too. You haven't just written one book; you've written several, you know. And um, yeah, like I said, I'll put the links in the I'll description for um, anyone who wants to check it out. But you know, it's, uh, it's an honor to speak with you. Honestly, it's, I, I think I'm going to really enjoy reading your book, and I think my listeners will too. I think it's one of those things that seems to be a necessary read. I think it will provide great insight into what's going on. It will give you amazing context to understand the situation. Um, and it's, it seems to be very objective, too. It doesn't seem like you're really putting your opinion in there necessarily. It doesn't seem like anything like that. No funny business. Um, and I like that. So, Yeah, well, I think I really am just a scientist before I am interested in politics at all. Like I come to the sciences just uh, out of biology. And I, I see, I try and see the human animal behave as objectively as I can. I don't have any grand schemes for humanity. I don't believe that humanity needs to be forced into a particular direction or needs to be remade a particular way. I'm, I'm mostly happy just observing and, and pointing out the, yeah, the suffering that we seem to be creating for ourselves. I think the way forward is to have podcasts like this, where you and I can get together as honest men 
we don't have an agenda. We're not politicians. Like I'm just a scientist trying to speak the truth so that we can understand the world around us and stop ourselves from suffering. That's all I care about. So I think podcasts like this are really important. Yeah, oh, because absolutely. they're going to reach. They're going to be a way to reach a lot of people. We have to disconnect people from the television and from the mainstream media. And if we can produce a quality alternative product, like with podcasts like this, then yeah, I think that's how we win. That's well, how we thing. can really it's, uh, liberate people. What is it like ninety six percent, or it's probably a hundred percent, but like ninety six percent of media is owned by four companies, I believe. And it's like, I mean, I know who's at the top. It's I believe to be the Rothschilds, who you know they bought. Most major media, starting with local newspapers at the turn of the century, and then we're heavily involved in Hollywood and it being brought up to what it's at now. Um, and then they own basically all these companies or all these media conglomerates through two companies, BlackRock and Vanguard. Yeah. Um, and I advise yeah, yeah. people to look into that because all the stuff you're getting, yeah, you might watch Fox and you think you're getting an opinion – and then you go to CNN, you're getting a different opinion, but you're not because ultimately those those two supposed enemies of the media, you know, uh, competitors with different ideologies yeah. are really the same thing owned by the same people. And the yeah. moment you realize that, the moment you go, oh, they're trying to keep me in a false paradigm. There is no left and right. It's It's people who can see and people who can't see. And they divide people to keep all the ones who can see from getting together and overthrowing the system. You know, it's it's yeah. really as simple as that. And um, there's a reason why they call it television programming, right? Yeah, yeah well, they certainly do. They, they call it television programming the same way that if you would subject a person to a schedule of behavior modification, you'd also call that programming. And it is. It is programming. You really do uh, basically punch in the ideas into a person's head. Yeah, and just uh, social not, engineering. Uh, yeah, it is. And it's terrifying, and, and that's why I think it's so important that guys like you and me do things like this, come together and provide an alternative that's high-quality alternative that people can consume instead of the mainstream. Just even if they don't – they don't have to agree with everything you and I say. They just have to question. As long as they just question the mainstream a little bit. Well, that's the thing, that. right? Just being able to have the discussion. Whether or not you agree with whatever people say, it's like you should never silence a voice just because you disagree with it, or you should never just yeah. – tune them out totally um, because you disagree with it, which is what we're seeing a lot, you know, with these social justice warriors and these young kids. They're they're like, oh, he said something that I disagree with. I have to run away into my safe space and put my fingers in my ears and go la, 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 la. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> you know, how are we ever to progress as a society if that's the state we're in? Um, but I do have to cut it close because we're, we're going over an hour now and it's going to be a pain in the it's ass cool. to edit it once it gets over a certain length. Um, but do you yeah. have any other new projects that you're working on or anything else you'd like to bring to my listeners' attention? Maybe something they can look out for in the future from you? Yeah. I mean, if you like Clown World Chronicles and you're more interested in hearing about what the potential solutions are, my next book is called Elemental Elementalism. And that's sort of a, it's a collection of uh, the religious and well, not the religious, but it's a collection of the spiritual knowledge and awareness that I've accumulated over the last 20 years by mostly taking a lot of spiritual sacraments like cannabis and psychedelics. And I've, I've taken this knowledge and I've put it together into one, I'm putting it together into one short handbook. And the idea is that you'll be able to read it and hopefully be liberated from all the lies of society. The society tells you that everything is a certain way. And because it's a certain way, you have to behave in a certain way. And this is mostly just not true. And the point of my book is to liberate people from this. So, yeah, check, check out Elemental Elementalism if you want to see my current project. All right. Well, I do appreciate that. I will check it out. And his website, by the way, is vjmpublishing.nz. That's vjmpublishing.nz. Again, I'll put all the links in the description so you guys can check it out. I highly advise buying his book. It seems to be a great read. I personally am going to buy a copy myself. Um, and it's been more than a pleasure speaking with you, Vince. Honestly, you seem to be a very intelligent man, very insightful. Um, and I would love to possibly have more conversations in the future, even if you'd be down for that. Yeah, no problem. It's been a pleasure talking to you as well, Chad. And I, I think that um, I'm always up for speaking out to a large number of people and uh, hopefully getting the message out and, and just hoping to liberate some people from the suffering that is created by Clown World. That was the point of my book was to really liberate people from the suffering that's created by the modern world. So, yeah, cheers, Chad. It's been a great podcast. I hope we can do some more in the future. Yeah, me too. Uh, but it's been a pleasure, Vince, and I, I hope you have a good night. All right, cheers, mate. Ciao. All right, bye.